Kono is the largest producer of diamonds in Sierra Leone. Diamonds could, at their best, be described as a mixed blessing. Not only because diamonds fueled the barbaric civil war in Sierra Leone, but also because even in more peaceful times, diamond and gold mining feed corruption, land degradation and the contamination of water sources. Um, yes, we have a new mineral act, that is true, but uh, there are some flaws in that act because there is no strong emphasis on what should be done after mining activities by either mining companies or even the artisanal miners. After an area is mined, the land is left exposed and degraded. It becomes unsuitable for farming and it is perforated with innumerable stagnant ponds that are breeding grounds for malaria-carrying mosquitoes. The Kono chieftain told us that people learned the hard way that agriculture brings permanent benefits to all, while diamonds bring big benefits to only a few and heavier, long-lasting damages to many. I believe that in the Kono district, the soil, especially within this particular area, contains diamonds. So for that reason, it's just a game. Lose and gain. At times you lose, at times you gain. Overlight mining is dangerous because of the explosion. But when it comes to damage to the surface, artisanal and alluvial mining, to my, in my opinion, cause more damage to the surface. Because if you put 300 people here to mine at the center, after three months, they'll be way down there. I mean, everywhere will be holes. Now, why has Kimberlite mining is one spot? Like the same pit where Cordulis is mining, that is the same pit they've been mining for many, many, many years. Two pits, pipe one, pipe two. They just keep going, going, going. So it's one spot. Whereas alluvial mining or artisanal mining, they will mine here and they will mine there and they will mine there and they will mine there and six months will be way out there and they will, I mean, it's just holes everywhere. To me, that is more destructive. When decisions are centralized, it is easier for foreign companies to corrupt a minister and to obtain permissions to greedily exploit resources. But as devolution of authority progresses, decision-making becomes more participated and policies start better representing the long-term interests of local communities. After mining, what do we do with the land? It was never spelled out. It is just now in the new mines and mural act that that one has been captured. Now, any mining company that comes here, you also have to explain what will be your plan after your mining activity. The vast majority of the people actually are farmers. So we should be doing things that will promote farming. Um, good education, um, um, farming implements, mechanized farming. Because if you want somebody to farm with a hoe, um, it's not going to be able to do that at a, uh, a big scale. Poor local populations are still vulnerable to the predatory policies of the big and rich global international players. What is required is that local communities are better networked globally amongst themselves, creating global alliances and sharing knowledge through digital networking tools that are now easily available and have compacted the whole world into one global village. But technology itself will not create a sense of world solidarity until the new rural citizens are endowed with a culture of global responsibility.